Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. Uh, just want to have a quick strategy session here on our yield max funds and what we're thinking might happen going into the week. So as most of you know, we took a pretty significant drop this past week, and it's definitely cause for concern. Um, we saw, to start off, we saw Tesla drop down to 215 just in one week all the way from basically from the beginning of the month, uh, Tesla's lost about 20%, which is kind of crazy. But just within the past week, we lost about 10% in Tesla. So definitely concerning. Ah, oh, welcome back. Good to see you back. So um, Let's see now. Uh, I want to try to see if we get Andre on and go into some spreadsheet analysis here. But for the time being, so obviously Tesla drops, so TSLY drops as well. And we saw a lot of that. Uh, could it be by the dip time? I mean, we're down to 1337. We're officially lower than we were at when I first bought in. So I'm definitely in the red along with a lot of you all. So since the beginning of August, we're down 20% in Tesla as well. Since the last week or so, we're also down. So on the downside, we seem to be mirroring Tesla stock exactly. But on the upside, we don't seem to shoot up as fast as Tesla stock shoots up. As far as the other funds, um, NVDY, we actually seem to be holding relatively steady. We've lost a few dollars since July 31st, 2386. So we've lost about two bucks or so. Uh, and then AMZY, relatively new. Uh, this one, uh, we've uh, lost about a dollar or so from the peak. The peak was August 7th. And our newest one, C-O-N-Y, Coney, or the Coinbase one, Ah, speaking of Coney, so you plan to buy some, huh? Are you buying the dip? Well, it's dipped like, ooh, like a dollar since it started. It started in 1976 down to 1842, so buy the dip, possibly. So that's Coney. And then next one is, oh, we have GUI, G-O-O-Y which from the peak when it went public July 31st, it's lost about 60 cents or so. And let's see here. Oh, oh, he's on. Cool. Oh, wow. Hey, well, didn't see you there. I was just rambling on. Oh, wow. Wrong screen. Yeah. All right, what's up, man? Yeah. Wait a second, let me move my headset. So oh. I just realized that yeah. Tesla has dropped as much as Tesla stock. So the downside seems to be exactly the same. But the upside seems to be capped. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we. I, I think as we we've discussed this so many times in this video, I mean, yeah. in this video series of the great yield max, and since I'm the I'm the uh, the the bear in the group. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But uh, I mean, are you buying the dip? Because man, oh man, I'm gonna start. It's like the best short. I put well, I bought Tesla stock last. Tuesday and it mm. fell further. So I bought the dip, but I didn't buy the dip low enough. Well, I mean, as our perspective, when we were talking about the market direction, it's mm -hmm. very interesting because when I follow the people that I look up to when it comes to trading and investing, economics, microeconomics, it's very interesting mm -hmm. that their perspective is like mine, but some people differ. Some yeah. like people like George Gammon or even uh, the I sent you that article in uh, on in our uh, message group or our, oh, yeah. that message saying that the markets Michael Burry seems that the uh, markets to be heading down lower. Now I don't want to bet against that guy. <laughs> I've been seeing that too. He's made like a 1.6 billion wager on like and the market dropping further. Like he's pretty much spot on. He was first to market during 2007. I think he right. got in 2005 and then uh, stair stepped it in uh, 2006, 2007 before the right. crash. That's a great movie, so, The Big Short. Yeah, The Big Short, oh, great, great movie. But I mean, 
Yep. And yep. is he correct? I would say overall, Michael Burry is 100% correct. Peter Schiff, uh, George Gammon, uh, Mike Maloney, all these people, the market is so inflated. We're standing on like pretty much like a, this a balloon is like this close to be pricked. Yep. It's all because of the Federal Reserve pumping up the mm-hmm. markets. And they're not slowing the inflation with, either. Yeah. Inflation, I mean, in, inflation by definition is just an expansion of the currency supply. Mm-hmm. These individuals, they don't know how to turn it off. They can either go fast as heck or slow, but they're still expanding it. But price inflation just keeps going. Yeah. Uh, I bought some eggs. It was uh, $4.18. And then when I looked at my old notes, I bought it for 86 cents a few years ago. Oh, really? I mean, they're back to normal where I am, but we had that crazy run up in the beginning of the year. I just find it interesting because, like, I'm I'm making a video right when you were talking to me, like, Mm -hmm. uh, making a video. I'm making a video about how oil prices are going to be going back to five and six and seven dollars. Yeah. Why are they going up again? It's crazy. They have to. Okay. Not just, oh, it's like, for one, uh, the main, obviously, one of the main reasons why the oil was pushed down. Because we were using our reserves. So if you guys want to look at some of the uh, reserves, please check out uh, not just Burry. The technicals are heavily suggested the top is in and the bear trend may be soon. Well, we don't know. So how do I say this? There is no top and there is no bottom in the sense of where it can go. The Federal Reserve can make the markets go any direction that they that they want. But that might not reflect in uh, in purchasing power. So the markets, they say they're at 3,000 or 10,000, 100,000, doesn't matter. But if it goes from 3,000 to 6,000 or 6,000 to 9,000, it may have gone up in price, but your purchasing power may have gone down because mm-hmm. price, consumer prices went 3x instead of the market went 2x. Does that make sense? Yep. But covered calls will provide some downside protection at the cost of some. Yeah, because you're capped. That's the thing. Like, if the stock, like, if you're getting a 120 call, like I did with JP Morgan stock a year ago, and the stock shoots up to 150, then your covered call is going to, like, your, your short position is going to grow to the downside. So you have to spend more money to buy it back. Oh. Let's see. I buy calls on TSLS inverse, inverse Tesla. Tesla. Yep. I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting this fixation on Tesla. Yeah. Like to me, like if you, if I really want it, cause like if I'm looking at something to grow in long term, will I look at Tesla? Cause if you watch anything of my previous videos or any of my talks, I believe that the stock market on um, all markets pretty much are pretty, are so inflated that they're going to crash in maybe 80% mm-hmm. lower, 90% lower. Cause we're just, we're living off of quantitative easing. We, we're just living off of paper. We can't do this forever. Mm-hmm. But to be more specific, when it comes to yield max, right? Not not to jump the subject so much. Yield max to me is just the way that they create the business model only truly benefits people who are one earning the uh, what is it? The people who manage it. I think the people who manage it win despite which way the market goes. Mm-hmm. The main point Andre wants to prove is he wants to to stay away from yield max. Ask him because I create robots. What can we get to make us all money monthly boom? No, actually, if I have to get in yield max, it's not to stay away. Just follow the money. The money doesn't show buys; it shows shorts. Mm-hmm. It's you don't need a robot or automation to prove that. Just look at the charts and look at where the overall direction is going. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a good thing is like uh, uh, birth uh, birth how Hathaway. Right. Look at the overall oh, direction in that chart. They're not going to do Berkshire. Did you hear that on the live stream? Yeah, because it only goes one direction. Yeah. <laughs> they're not that volatile. I mean, I'm in the middle of Florida. It's funny. So California got their first hurricane. All this year? Yeah, just now. So my brother just moved back out there. Now California is mm. getting them. So he took the hurricanes from Florida to there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. I thought to ask each individual, hey, is your yield max portfolio positive or negative? I don't know where you guys are because there's so many buying points, but I would say typically you're probably very close to break even or negative. And Mm -hmm. if you're in there, you know, if I was going to do yield max like you guys are, I would 
exit so often. I'll take the dividend yield once that I see it slowing down and I know that there's going to be a dividend crush or a gap. I would exit my trade like I talked about in previous videos that you guys have me on. And mm -hmm. this is not hard stuff to exit. You can use the MACD. You can use a moving average. This is not complex stuff. But I would say the majority of people who trade or know anything about markets, they don't trade at all. They don't know mm -hmm. exit strategy. They don't know entry strategy. They just know buy before the exit dividend date, get the money. And basically it was a dollar cost average. Mm -hmm. I mean, Did you no, see what nothing the hurricane wrong. was called, by the way? Huh? What the hurricane was called? Hurricane Hillary, that's a perfect thing. Gosh, it just destroys <laughs> everything. Yeah. But selling shorts, can I lose money? Any direction, buying or selling, if you're entering into an asset, you're, you're, what you're calling for is my capital can appreciate or depreciate. There's always risk. So this, that's understandable. Oh, here's a good comment. So what's the main point Andre wants to prove? He wants us to stay away from yield max. Ask him because I can't create robots. What can we get to make us all money monthly? There's, I mean, me and you had that same conversation. Like I can list off a whole bunch of dividend stocks that are over 10% that truly go the same direction. Mm -hmm. So what's ask the reverse question. If stocks that have higher yields typically go down, what about stocks with lower yields? Maybe they go up. A good stock that I just bought, and I told you guys in multiple videos, is VOC. Mm -hmm. VOC, I've been buying constantly. Here, if you want to bring up the chart, VOC, you'll see what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. I'm actually running on a hot spot here. Internet's out. Oh, here. Uh, you want me, to, want me to put it up? If you want. And we can go over the spreadsheet, uh, too. I don't lose money until I sell. True. Right. True. No, no I, I don't know if I can agree with that. Because if your money well, not I mean, working you for you, sell, it's not yeah. a realized loss. It's not a yeah, not yeah. a realized loss, but it, it can still lose you money currently. Like for example, if you put in ten dollars and you're always sitting at five dollars and four dollars mm -hmm. and three dollars and four, yeah, you, you're not down technically. You still <laughs> there's a the potential, but there is mm -hmm. a time frame that people don't realize that if that capital is not doing something, paying you higher amounts or doing something, you're actually losing because of inflation or losing because that money's not being utilized mm -hmm. actively. That's how I see it when, when I don't pull out trades and stuff. Was that you? Right here. Oh, no, that's my other group. My bad. Let me mute my phone. It's like the one thing I forget to do in videos is mute my cell phone. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, mine's linked to my MacBook, so it goes off oh. sometimes. Let's see. I I don't lose money until I sell. I totally hear you, Dre, but some of us feel you have more of a trader's feel as buy and hold. It's not a trader's feel. It's just to me, I, I'm in all assets except for like options. Mm -hmm. It's because it's like when it comes to commodities, I'm in commodities because mainly of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is dishonest. The government's dishonest. Precious metals is honest money. So typically, dishonest will be honest. Honest, honest will be honest money will beat dishonest money long term. Mm -hmm. When it comes to trading, I trade actively because it's part of my portfolio. Like if you're looking at making a portfolio, you need to, if you want to, incorporate active trading as one part of the pie, passive cash flow and dividends as another piece, dividends and stocks, ETFs, ETNs. You got to break it apart what you're doing. So you're not solely relying in one area. It seems to me that you guys are relying so heavily on yield max. So when it does go down, and I'm not saying it all will go down, but the probability is pretty high because nearly every single high yield uh, ETF, ETN, and stock all went down. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them. Typically very high yield indicate a shit company. But I'm sorry, poop company. <laughs> but <laughs> yield max sole existence to bribe yields from their option games. So why would that rule rule of thumb apply? Okay, it, just say this. If you're buying an asset, I, I like the guy who was talking about it, who was saying this stuff earlier. You didn't you didn't lose until you sell. Mm -hmm. Just apply the same concept, right? If I'm buying TSLY or Apple or whatever but I'm getting paid a constant dividend, like they're saying their strategy, but my principal's collapsing. Is that a winning strategy for you? 
for them, it's going to, no matter what situation happens, they're going to typically win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how much free-flowing cash they got, but I bet they're making a lot from all these, uh, all the fees. Why wouldn't they? I mean, to me, that's how, that's one way people measure, uh, uh, measure their own fund. Well, it's Can like a, talk? it's like a 99, it's like a dollar, you know, expense ratio. Yeah. For... That's, I mean, people are buying millions of shares. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of money coming in. Uh, can you talk more about active trading, specifically entry and exit? Actually, can I uh, can I show a screen about that if you don't mind? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, guys, let me show you something cool. Uh, I got like five screens, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, go to Investopedia, investing.com, present, show, share. Uh, what asset do you want to talk about? So he says, can you talk more about active trading? I'll let you decide what asset class. Oh, just U.S. stocks, right? Uh, what U.S. stock? I'll let you. I'll let you pick. So I'm not. I'm not uh, cherry picking. <laughs> um, should we do Tesla stock since we talk a lot about TSLY? Okay, let's do Tesla. Yeah. Remember, guys, I did not pick Tesla. <laughs> I did not. Let me see. We're on. This is screen one. Screen two. Uh, I'm looking at you guys. I just. I have uh, multiple screens. Okay. Uh, you might add it to the uh, live stream. Yep. T S L L T. Oh, just type in Tesla. All right, we'll just look at Tesla, okay? Mm-hmm. What's we do a very simple way of trading: entry requirements and exit requirements. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is something that even me, when I'm and when I'm having my uh, my study sessions or with my own groups and teaching trading and stuff, the main thing that most people fail at is that they don't know what are the requirements for trading there should be a confirmation a secondary confirmation right without a confirmation how to enter how to exit what keeps you out of the market you typically will always lose and that's a it's a good example why most traders lose in general they don't know the basic rules to trading all right let's go to the daily a little bit easier okay let's look at the daily so for me Let's do something super simple, non-complicated, non, no like magic juju stuff. We're going to do a moving average. Let's do a moving average of 50 or 10. Actually, we're on the daily, so let's do 10, 10 to 15. This is not complex stuff, guys. This is to me and the people I've taught is very simple. Let's do, let's do 15. 15 is pretty fair. Okay. If you're just buying the asset, there's no leverage, there's no options, you're just buying one-to-one, cash positions, okay? Cash positions. So we're not making a comp, I'm not making a complex at all. If you buy once the candle closes above the moving average, as you see right here, and you wait, just say two candles after. So it closes, wait one candle, wait two candles, and buy. So if you buy at this candle, at pretty much $169.70, you apply the same concept to exiting. It exits, that means it goes up, that means the close price closes and it has to remain under the moving average for two candles. So it closed here, one, two, it didn't do that. So we do not exit. It did that here, one, two, right here. So you would exit in this candle. So how I trade is that I never, ever, ever get the top and bottom. I get an average high and an average low entry. So this is what you would eat. See? Mm-hmm. Here's here's the move. The, the move went from here to here. You took home the blue box. It's not complicated, guys. Forex is complicated. It's a lot harder. But stocks are a lot easier. You don't have to worry about all that risk and high volatility so if you apply this concept across the board you typically would make some big gains right here Mm -hmm. you would enter your short position here now this remember to enter a short position in stocks it requires leverage if you want to avoid leverage completely you can buy right here hypothetically and remember i'm not telling you what to do at all this is a very simple analysis if it crosses over here and there's, uh, there's, there's, there's actually uh, indicators or 
market uh, structure that you can break down to see if it's just a pullback to continue the trend. But if not, let's see. We can, if we add another moving average, uh, is this complicated? Am I adding too much so far? No, I think it's good. Okay. Let's add two moving averages. Let's do one of 15 and do one that's larger. Let's do it at, uh, say, 25. No, 30. Let's do double. So 30. Let's make a simple rule. When they cross plus two candles, then you buy, hypothetically, right? So you wouldn't buy anything in here because they don't cross. But you would buy right here. So you would buy here and you would exit your first position here. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. This chunk. So you're entering at $146 and exiting at a, about $200. At $60 for e $60 on every one share that you buy. Mm -hmm. Once again, not complex. If you're entering over here at the cross point, or at, at, so here's the cross. You have to wait for it to cross over twice. You're buying around here. You're probably taking a marginal loss, maybe a $20 loss. So how much does this win? This is a $60 win, $20 loss. And from here to here is nearly $100. You should be winning, right? Right. So if you guys are asking how to enter an exit, this is not – complex it's it's really to me it's very simple i don't trade with moving averages but this is just a strategy that any person can understand mm -hmm. entry requirements exit requirements and you can add several rules and this can be done 100 percent manually and without computers yep let me see it is complex is this complex i mean I mean, you're explaining it well. You know what I see in the chart is that it goes up and down, laughing my ass off. But I mean, most people I know. don't. Oh, go ahead. Well, a lot of people, and myself included, like we don't, we don't have a lot of time during the day to look at this, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I bet you're looking at it all day. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I would say there is a time benefit on my part that I have a lot of time to look at charts. I mean, I've been studying charts mm -hmm. all morning just like crack dawn for clients including myself so yeah what i used to do uh when i was when i was in the uh the military is when i'm trying to buy an asset like like here voc so i'm not cherry picking because i keep talking about this i'm not telling you to buy this please do not think that at all <laughs> <laughs> my god i don't want to get in trouble I was talking, if you look at my YouTube channel during this time frame, I was talking about buying VOC. Mm -hmm. Just check out my YouTube channel. I make hundreds of videos about economics and trading. I bought here for the dividend. The dividend is quarterly. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, there's a difference in TSLY versus VOC. V, uh, I think VOCs, uh, actually, let me look it up to make sure I'm not giving you BS information. Right. Okay. Let's look at this dividend yield. And they always pay quarterly because I've been with them for quite some time. Mm -hmm. They're an energy trust. Why am I looking at energy trust? Because I like to look at the political aspect. I know our president Biden is a interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> and his viewpoints on, I don't know, his viewpoints on economics is interesting. So the best way to put it out without, you know, breaking them down. So they're paying a 10% yield, almost 10%, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're saying they're saying technical analysis is the sell, right? I, I entered in around here. Why? Because of economics. I heard about certain presidents going to do X, Y, Z with energy. So I started buying everything that's energy. This has nothing to do about technical analysis. It has to do with an economic slash political view. Mm -hmm. So since they pay quarterly... And if you guys don't believe me, let me show you guys here the perspective on here with the uh, the balance sheet, cash flow, dividends. So for me, I was looking at something that's energy that pays dividends monthly or quarterly, and I found a whole bunch. So that's what I was getting into. I I don't like Tes Tesla so much because of how it's built. It's built in a very interesting manner that 
it doesn't follow my uh, rules at all. So if you guys start looking at this, how often they pay quarterly, they have a long history of paying, right? Cool. Their chart is low. It kind of like a, it's kind of like the beginning of T TSLY, right? Mm -hmm. But the question I'll have to ask you: Was energy in the right perspective here versus here? Isn't there a difference? Right now, energy is going to go higher because of our current leadership, right? So buying here didn't make any sense. But buying here, to me, made more sense because of our current administration. Mm -hmm. If you guys follow politics and follow what's happening, you, Andre, what are your analyzed returns across the last five years? I'll have to look yeah, at my entire I'm just pull that comment up. We doubt that you are a day. I don't. I, I do not like the term day trader. I just trade what's given to me. <laughs> if the banks want to enter X Y Z, I will enter near their entry and exit where they exit. This is a dividend yield channel, and you don't use yield max like yours. Wait, what are you talking about? We don't doubt you that you are a day trader. This is a dividend channel, and you don't use yield max like you are saying. TSLY will go up and down or down because of TSL wave. Well, no, that's not true. See, isn't it interesting? This guy battles for the bank, says it's based off of TSL, uh, TSLA. He didn't read the PDF of TSLY. If he read the T, if he read how they manage it, it is supposed to, it's not supposed to mirror it. It's not supposed to be exactly like it. It can be completely wrong. TSLY is a different entity well, than TSLA. Well, the downside has been exactly the same for the past week, but the upside is capped. Cap? Yeah, but couldn't it go higher? It's, it's a possibility it can go higher and exceed TSLY. They are supposed to be similar, but not the same. But TSLY is his only thing. about this comment here? Andre, you're comparing a stock with a 10-year history with something that has existed for nine months. Well, actually, I showed a giant PDF of a whole bunch of stocks that lasted a what, couple years, right? And they all did typically the same thing, went down, right? Yeah, like if you look at like your QILDs and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I literally can show chart. I have charts on a lot of things that the, if the yield is so high, typically the market will, the, the, the stock price or ETF price will typically go down. Not all of them, but I would say a lot of them will. Mm -hmm. Coach is not totally capped. I'm just saying, so the downside pretty much mirrored Tesla exactly. Yeah. But, but when Tesla shoots up, we see an increase, but it's not nearly as high as when the stock shoots yeah. up. Part of that's because of the dividend payout, obviously. Uh, but what is the delay? Have you noticed that there's a delay from TSLY versus TSLA? Like a lag? Yeah, like, like it can't be one to one, right? It can't be like, hey, we did X move and this did X move. There's going to be some lag. Uh, actually, why am I asking you? Mention because and out of UMX, you, can you go over that strategy? What? Getting in and out. Oh, something that came up. So you talked about shorting yield max. Yeah, right. you can short yield max, but it is through it is not through the same means that I typically do. So let's let's look at TSLY. Okay, go back to that. TSLY gave you clear. I mean, we did this on the live stream. I then I say I would exit at this price. Like, it's mm. not TSLY. TSLY is no different than any other stock in a sense of, of market m manipulations. Their market is telling you when the elephants enter and the elephants exit. So when I was talking to you guys, when it was at like $18 around there, I was saying, hey, you guys should exit. I can't tell you what to do. If I was in for the dividend yield, I would exit because the elephant left the room. He's not in there for the buys. Mm -hmm. And this is not hard to figure out. It's just looking at candle lengths, candle bodies, for an example. All right. Yeah. This. I don't, I don't like diving into a deep technical analysis or breaking down what's happening, but to like a, a discrete way, because I don't want to lose followers or uh, was it make things complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Look, you remember, remember guys, check THB's previous videos with me on. I love, I love being uh, called on my BS or if not, I was saying exit around here, right? What date was that? July 19th? Yeah, I was like, 
I mean, even with even when I was saying like, hey, I'm not saying yield max is a bad investment, but to me, the best way to look at yield max is the enter and exit strategy, moving average. So here, let's do the moving average of what, what was it again? Fifteen, right? Let's do the moving average of fifteen. Okay. So I'm not cherry picking it. I'm using the same consistent numbers. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. You guys can do whatever you want with your funds. But for me, I would have been long gone. There's no way I would have been in. But I know before July 19th, we were looking great. It was like 70% no, right annualized dividend. And it was I was up 15%. So I was happy, perfectly happy up until July Look, 19th. Like, this is the buying zone, like I stated. And this right here, you wouldn't exit here. You would exit at this third candle here. Nearly exactly what I was talking about. Two candles past the close of a moving average. I would, if it was me, my trading robots, my own personal trading strategy, I would exit at around this price because I'm not that kind of trader that gets tops and bottoms. I take like 80%. Would you buy back in at the dip? No. Uh, th and I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. So here, this is if I was going to buy for the dividend. So this is me. I would have got this blue box. I would have not taken out up here. I would have gotten it out the blue box and been pretty happy. Like it's a pretty good game. Three dollars for every share. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I said this in your last video. Most likely what's going to happen is that it's going to bounce in this zone. It typically oh so there's three routes it can go. Up, sideways, and down. My view is that it's going to go down no matter what. It's going to break this $13 zone and head down lower than $12. That's my bet. What do you think with all the news coming about Tesla? It, like, do you Tesla think that and TSOY are similar? Even if Tesla goes up, sure. But that doesn't mean TSOY can go up. I don't know where their positions are. I'm just, All I'm looking for is where the elephants are right? Mm -hmm. Where the gaps are. If I would probably buy more. Um, I mean, I spent my dividend already on Tesla stock, but yeah, like right now it's lower than where I bought to begin with. So, I mean, if you just look at it, right, where we're, this is a clear sign that we're heading a downturn, especially these, how do I say it? When you see a red candle and the top has no wick, is a clear sign to sell off, sell off, sell off, sell off right here. Okay, cool. So we might have some consolidation here. This may be the zone where accumulation happens of liquidity. Hey, can you overlay Tesla with TSLY? You can, but if you do that, you'll lose the prices. Oh, because I do that on Seeking Alpha. Yeah, if you, if you do that, you'll lose the prices and not see the true thing of happening. Because TSLY... I, I, to me, if I was looking at TSLA, I would not look at TSLY. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, reverse. If I was trading TSLY, I wouldn't look at TSLA because they're not the same thing. They're very similar, but not the same thing. They're the elephants that enter this room are not the same elephants that enter that room. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. So I would trade it like they're separate beings. And when it comes to this zone right here, these two big candles, it is saying that it's possibly going to bounce and go higher but i think that an x an, an x dividend day is going to happen around here and when it does i think it's going to trap you guys or trap people and head down lower again that's because mm -hmm. i think ultimately even if i'm wrong temporarily just say i'm wrong and it goes up to 14 dollars there's some stagnation and heads down lower i think ultimately it will break this barrier zone right here and head down lower Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just when I start looking at the bulls versus the bears, the overall direction and what I know, I know that everyone's buying for the dividend. If I'm a bank, a small business, I'm sorry, a big business, or I got money in the bank, what do I do with that knowledge? If everyone's buying, that is pure liquidity. Why, why don't I use it against them? Wouldn't that make sense? Because mm -hmm. in Forex and other markets, what other people do not understand is that these individuals can see your entries. It's kind of like Robinhood. Robinhood sells order flow. Once banks know where the orders are, all the buys are at, all the call positions are at, all the puts, 
They can see everything, right? And just big giant, kind of like COT reports, commitment or trader reports. If you can see that data, you can tell where a bank will enter and exit. They will knock out these traders here, knock out these traders here, and run it the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Because they know where the money's at. We don't know that until we see their move, kind of like these big gaps. Gaps are a clear sign of elephants yeah. or banks or whatever entity you guys want to use. That's why when it came to here, I will, my money would have been out. This gap here, this gap here, and this over here, or it gave you three chances to get out. You see that? Three chances. Mm -hmm. you can, it's, it's pretty blessing right there. You got to be happy to get three chances to be told to get the hell out. Mm -hmm. Most markets don't give you nothing but one chance. <laughs> right. I hope I'm not going too far. Don't care if you lose the price. I want to see the chart overlay. Okay, let's do chart overlay. Give me a second, indicator. And then let's okay. go over your spreadsheet too. Yeah, no problem. Compare, add a symbol. Let's add T S L A. Tesla, NASDAQ. Oh, okay. We don't lose a point. We kind of. It looks ugly. <laughs> oh, I, see. I think I added TSLA instead of TSLY. I, I think I'm getting confused again. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. But uh, is this complicated? Am I messing up too much? I think the fans are getting a little antsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm 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 that guy. I'm like Peter Schiff saying, "Hey guys, get out, get out, get out," or do the opposite. I mean, I just tell people like, if you're trading, day trading, going for dividends, I do dividends the same way. If the market reverses, I don't keep buying the dip. I I exit my positions. I lock in my stop. That mm -hmm. means move your stop loss above your entry, locking in profits. So no matter which way it goes, you're in profit. Mm -hmm. Most people don't do that. They just keep buying the dip, and I don't understand why. It's, I don't know. It's the income investing. I mean, that's the thing. We're, we're income investors looking looking to keep the dividends coming in. And, yeah. you know, at least for me, like with a portion of the portfolio, I'm thinking not do everything. Look at and that. I mean, at least a good portion. Hey, let me just bring up Tesla on the screen. I mean, it just... Even for me, I have a dividend pro pro portfolio too. I love dividends. I have my monthly dividends, I have my quarterlies, I have one annual. Everything else is monthly and quarterlies. I still do the same thing. I look at my numbers for like PSEC or other companies and I exit my position when the numbers start going bad. Mm -hmm. Most people is like, buy the dip. <laughs> well, there is no dip once it's, you know, we don't sell. That's such a scary thing to say at Boogie World. We don't sell. Oh, my God. Rising volume. Oh, I, I love that question. Ask him, how does volume imply when, when you're shorting? Think about it. If, you, if, it's, if the volume keeps increasing, yeah, it's supposed to go up higher. Very interesting way of thinking. So I did show your spreadsheet on the last stream. Yeah. And... Um, there were some questions that came about like methodologies and whatnot. I just used the simplest common way, moving average. I didn't use any of my technical analysis skills. I didn't use any advanced robots. I just looked at it and said, hey, is the moving average above or above, below? Or did it cross? And did you take the entry or exit? Because if I made it complex, most people will, will tune out and say it's too hard. Mm -hmm. Kind of like saying like Aunt Boogie, we don't sell, we don't sell. Let me show you a stock that you know I had the same thing, same ideology. This stock went to zero. I, it was one of my first years buying stocks. I bought this stock and it went from like thirteen dollars to two dollars in like three days. Did you hold it all the way down? Yep, I kept on buying too. I uh, did went, something like that to too. I did something like that too. Yeah, I mean. The common thing will be asking you, hey, would Warren Buffett stay in if it's, let's say Warren Buffett bought right here, right? Just say hypothetically you have Buffett on your side. If he bought here, do you think he would have exited a whole lot earlier? What, what would you think? 
Oh, Buffett. Yeah, just say Warren Buffett's right next to you. You say, hey, where would you have bought and where would you have sold? Do you think he would be buying the dip right now? Mm, I mean, given how much it's dropped, he probably, well, he's a long-term investor. So Yeah, he is. As a long-term investor, you it running up $3 per share, you're not going to capitalize off of any of that? None of it? Oh, the engineer says, yes, he would. Well, I think if Buffett was here, he's like, I would have called in and got a better price. <laughs> I tried to get him on, but, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, outside the Buffett thing, this is quite interesting. But I, to me, if you guys make, make the argument that buying the dip is better than exiting the trade, I would love to see your portfolio. You know, I don't know if you're winning or losing. I have no idea. But if it's come to yield max, I would say, not yield max, TSL Y or TSL whatever. So in TSL Y, I would say the majority are down. What would you guess? The majority up or down in TSL Y? I mean, right now I'm down. So I think a lot think, of us are down. Yeah. Do you, I mean, I'm not saying hard concepts, but I don't, I, I highly, I do not believe that people are getting the best entries in these trades. Because most people don't even know the concept that I'm talking about right now. Like, so for me, like this big ass run up, which I big giant run up, how many buys would you have bought? As much as you can, right? Well, this was between June and July, right? Yeah, June and July. How many buys do you I bought do? after the dividend payout? I did okay. buy some more. So if it was me, I would probably halt buying. Halt I means stop buying after this gap. So see this gap right here? I would mm -hmm. stop buying because I, I wanted to I want to confirm that the elephant did not leave the room. Remember, this is not complicated, it's just gaps. I'm mm -hmm. not doing anything else, uh, double tops, uh harmonics. I'm just looking for is there a big place where buyers or our sellers are exiting? This gap and this gap show that there's big movement here. There's too much happening here. I should exit my trade, right? Or lock in your trade by moving your stop loss or going into your broker, you know, logging in and then modifying the trade saying, hey, exit trade if it goes below this price. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. Do a discount cash flow estimate on Tesla. And it's clear why I say Buffett would buy every dip. And if he bought every dip, he would be sitting in some pain right now. I think Buffett would probably exit or lock in some of his position. So if he's incorrect, he still has a lot of space for it. Um, Uso, you're starting to make me feel that you can't think other than one way. Is he talking to me? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't think any one way. I just follow the money. Look, hey, okay, have this. THB. Just name any mm. stock, any stock except for Tesla and TSLY, anything that we haven't mm. covered. Apple. Something new. Apple. Cool. Okay, same indicator, same rules. I'm not making it complex, right? I exit the trade when there's more than three candles past an entry. So my buy would be right here. My exit would be down here. My buy would be back up here. My next exit would be right here. Would you buy up? No. Like in the middle there? I would. Oh, would I buy through this period here? Once, yeah, at all. I would only buy a retracement only if there's a gap up. Like this right here. See this <laughs> big gap from here to here? I would buy a shit ton. Let's see if I did. Remember, I, I, I'm actually trading Apple because of you. I have my, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's not me personally trading. That's my role. Well, the NVIDIA trade. trade worked out well for you too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just that most people don't follow consistent rules. So they end up making terrible decisions because they're entering emotionally or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But it, this to me, trading is a business and most people don't conduct themselves as owning a business. They conduct it as an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Does Andre have a net worth like Buffett at the same age? 
<laughs> you're getting a lot. I don't think you can compare Buffett's net worth dollars. and my net worth at the same age. We have two different lifestyles, two different beginnings. And most of my life I've been for for job wise, I've been in the military. Right. Oh, has 51% of Apple. Dang. Mm -hmm. And also buying stocks in his time versus today, I I would bet if I can go back in the past, I would I would do so much better than I would do today. Because what, if I had the same knowledge, if I can go mm -hmm. back to the same exact knowledge, I would do so much better. Just because I, the manipulation then, I can get in at the boom and bust a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Like if we if me and you were born five years earlier, no, I'm sorry, ten years earlier. I think I would have capitalized off of the 08 crash instead of oh, yeah. arriving to the party. If you knew like what you know yeah. now, like 10 or 12 years ago. Correct. Yeah. Like, I, I've been talking, I've been on YouTube for like five, six years. And if I got out, my main investment would be precious metals. Like I would be buying silver at two to $3, selling mm -hmm. it at $58. Boom. Set for life. <laughs> Andre. Can you prove any of your trades? Have I done that already? A whole bunch of times already? Um, I mean, you've shown a lot on here. I'm trying to keep up myself. Yeah, I show I, I show my trading charts all the time. I mean, it's not – I'm probably one of the few people He's on, on you. YouTube <laughs> that will actually show off trades because it's not that big of an issue. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, Mr. Mart Me 29 uh, Mart Me 29 Gaps indicate elephants. Okay, so my analogy is very simple, right? If you have a pool of water, if a mouse jumps in, makes a small splash. If an elephant dips his leg in or jumps in, makes a big splash. Markets move mainly because of elephants, right? So when you see an elephant enter the, the, the room or exit the room, typically you follow them. I call it following the money. So who does this shit right here? Who can, who can do this? Street Can street money do this? Hell no. Only big players can do this. And when big players do this, I exit too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's here. What's, what's another stock? Let's look at, um, what's something different than Apple. Uh, what's something fall? What's something interesting? Uh, what about Walmart? All right. Okay, cool. Cause I can trade Walmart. On my computer right here. So where would you enter your buys if you could? Like if you were the perfect trader, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever entry you had here, you're probably down on this position. But entering here, exiting here, entering here, exiting here, you're doing pretty good. Like a simple moving average typically does better. But as, I mean, even over here. Like you buy on this leg here, and you would exit over here. I I, I have a, I have a distinct rule. I never get the top of trades. I almost never. Like when I get my personal trades, I only get an average of like eighty percent, seventy five percent, eighty percent of the move. I never get the top of the bottom. Mm -hmm. it just it, to me, it's not possible to get everything. Right. Oh, holy crap! Coach is in the. This is you. He's talking to you. Let's see here. I'm. I got this Discord going too. This Discord's really blowing up. Nice, nice. Let's see. Physical gold and silver is cool, but but they aren't investments. It's either so, NVDY or AMZY. I actually I only own TSLY. Oh my god. So if you want to trade, Andre gives you good advice. If you want to hold passive collective income, we're not interested in, in trading. I can give you this. They're the same thing. If you are buying an asset, you should choose the best exit for that. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Most people do not measure what's happening long term. They just keep on buying. They don't think that the process through. If TSLY, like I said, it or TSLA, whatever it is for Yield Max, if TSLY is going to drop dramatically, why would I buy the dip again? Wouldn't it be better if I exited my full position? and re-entered at a different bottom, what, what do you think has a, a greater gain? Uh, Andre, with that straight up BS, 
how's it BS? It's, I, I, I did it on his live stream on his channel before it happened. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This... Between Discord and this, I'm like just responding to fan comments all the time now. <laughs> yeah, it's that's, not... that's a good. That's a good problem. I mean, I tell yeah. people, like, I'm happy you have that Discord. Like, I was looking at the differences between Discord and Telegram. Mm -hmm. Telegram is really good connecting like other websites and linking them live on the uh, on the thing versus uh, uh, Discord, but. Trading and investing requires two completely different mindsets. Traders adopt a I'm in the casino. You should have the same. You should have exit requirements and entry requirements for long term and short term investing. If you do not have them, that is the individual's problem. Most likely. You have the problem of not measuring the trade. You're not following the money. Even if you're a long-term trader, if you're not following the money, it's you typically get caught in the same problems. Like just this move alone, like this is just, I mean, hey, uh, THB, do you play chess? Mm -hmm. Okay. I love playing chess. I literally play like an hour a day. Like, oh, wow. Well, I, I feel like I play it with people more than like, I, I play it like mentally, you know? <laughs> I give a second. So I play chess a lot. Mm -hmm. And if your opponent, okay, this is going to make it easier. If you, you, It doesn't matter if you're a short-term player or long-term player in chess. You're looking for the best way to defeat your opponent, right? And proceed and get better. Mm -hmm. If your opponent is this trading chart and you're going for the dividends and they're telling you, right? The, he's like, hey, I'm giving you my queen. And if you don't take my queen, I'm going to take your king. And you miss out on the opportunity for several moves. Who's into, whose fault is that? It's a person. It's a person's fault. They're, the market is literally telling you, and this is not this hard material. It's telling you right here, here, and here, to that whoever has the money bags is shorting or exiting. I don't got that kind of money to move yield max, but I, I I have the common knowledge, which is not hard, to figure out that they're shorting, and possibly they only got three options, right? Short. Mm -hmm. Long or break even, but I think long term is going to be lower. Let me see. So it doesn't matter if you're going long term or short term, because if you just say, uh, what's a long term strategy? Uh, for me, silver. I've been buying silver for like since 2009, right? Consistently, year after year, buying for 2009. If the charts told me to exit my position because the big banks are pulled out, I would just exit part of my position. You know, Andre, when my daughter was born in 1992, I bought her 5,000 worth of Microsoft. She still owns it. It's not necessary to trade. Oh, I mean, if you buy it back in 1992 and you have it today, that's, that's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But I mean, it's kind of interesting. Like, did you use those gains for anything? Does that Microsoft has a dividend yield? They used to. They used to. I think they still. Let me let me check here. Yeah, I mean, to me, I mean, I would say like, if it's worth, if it's say you spent five thousand dollars, I don't know how much. I don't know how. Yeah, much it's like point eight six percent. It's funny how you skip over questions. How can I skip over questions? You guys are asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Battles from the bank. Please, uh, can you tell me what that question was? This is kind of funny. <laughs> it's funny how you skip over questions you don't. So have. we had, I will say, when we confronted the crypto scammer, we had a great stream when we did that. Everybody seemed to like that, uh, confronting the crypto yeah, I mean, scammer. Those are just pointed questions that I think that I, I wish more people would be involved in. Okay. It's, it's like a... It's kind of like how we're playing lawyer. That's you know, awesome. Like lawyer. I like this example. That's a good, like, um, like that book, 100 Baggers. That's a good long-term, like, multi-bagger trade. I yeah. like it. Yeah. We should all, I would say, in your portfolio, you should have multiple things for long-term, short-term, but have exit oh, and entry requirements. They're saying, people. so I've seen a few, they're saying you don't understand yield max, like what yield max, what the funds actually do. 
that's what his okay. question was. So I think. let's look at the perspective of Yield Max, the owners of Yield Max. How do I make income? Okay, TSP, you're the owner of Yield Max. How do you make income? What what do you need? You've got to do covered calls and puts and okay. move out of them at the correct time, as cool. close to the correct time as possible. Check. What 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 would what, what would be a really good income? What would be a constant fee? What would so be I'm great? not. So every time someone buys into their buy a share, you get a piece of that, right? You get a dollar. Was it, mm -hmm. it ninety cents or ninety nine cents? Something like that. Yeah. So what to say is a dollar, right? Every time someone buys, you get a dollar. Oh, mm -hmm. So many questions, uh, but. If I was Yield Max and Yield Max, I don't think they're idiots. I think they're very intelligent people. They know I would bet that if they give a high yield dividend, most likely their chart is going to typically reflect almost every other company's charts or project or fund. Typically, it goes down. Anything over 10 to 20, 30 percent almost always has a down slope, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think they knew this prior to opening up Yield Max? The managers. Yeah, just a good possibility. Think about it. If almost every fund stock that gives a high dividend yield always typically goes lower, do you think they knew that? What do you think about this? Why why does a chart of TSLY and TSLA show the same? Show the same what? Same same price movements? Andre, why are you not answering? What does TSLY do? She's on you, man. <laughs> I did answer that. TSLY is a call. Here, I, I haven't read you it. This is what they do, right? They get, is there a high yield, in, uh, high yield income strategy, right? Option strategy for income investors, right? I know that, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't trade it that way because the money doesn't follow the perspective. I mean, if you look at it, if you collectively bought, uh, okay, let's make an easy strategy. Do you think buying yield max or TSLY once a week is too much? Uh, okay, once a month is about what I would do. Okay, so once a month. Okay, so let's do it. We have to go back to the daily. And we'll go back to yield max and read it. We'll go to Yahoo Finance. Or actually, let's we'll stick on this one here. Type in TSLY. And just read it. What is it about? And does it follow the money? Well, I mean, if you're looking at the charts, where do you think the money's going? Like, if you're if you're if you're that perfect trader, how would you approach this uh, this chart? If you're like the, the, the perfect trader, you can get every top and every bottom. Which direction would you be? Uh, ask me again. Sorry. So, just say hypothetically, you're the perfect trader. You can mm -hmm. get every top and every bottom, right? Mm -hmm. But you can only pick one direction. Let's say that. Make it like some stipulations. What direction would you be right now? If you wanted to like maximize your returns, you would yeah, want to buy at yeah. every bottom. Yeah, buy every bottom, go for the dividend, right? Exit at every top. Do you think that exceeded the yield in someone who placed a short at every single high point? What do you think? Which one could have made more money? Uh probably the probably the opposite of what yeah I'm to me i would bet that i mean i just to me it looks like the short position yields better maybe i'm wrong but if i was trading this since the day of inception I, the only thing after reviewing simple data my whole thing would be like this why the heck am i buying why do i care about 10 percent dividend 20 percent dividend when it drops 40 percent does that make sense mm -hmm. i mean maybe it's complex math but t S L Y. Let's read it. And all right, let's read it. Maybe I'm wrong. You, you guys still use uh, Yahoo Finance, right? Not as That's much. It. I mean, I, I still do use it. So their fund summary. The fund will seek to employ its investment strategy as it releases TSLA, regardless of whether there are periods of adverse market, economic, or other conditions, and will and will not seek to take temporary defense positions during such periods. It is seeking to achieve an investment objective, 
the fund implements a synthetic covered call strategy using a standardized exchange traded and flex options. It is not diversified. That's what they're fun, what they're for. Cool. We, we see what they're doing, but to me, if you look at where they're going, follow the perspective, follow the information, does buying exceed shorting? That's all I'm looking for. If I'm a long-term investor, investor, dividend yield runner, dividend yield goal, which I am, I can show you stocks that I've been in for a long time and I compare it the differences. Uh, was it SVOL? Some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I even showed you my live trades on that. The whole thing. All my entries and exits. I compared the differences. Is, is buying in, in a high yield stock better than shorting? And my shorting position basically massacred it. Mm -hmm. uh, give me a second. SVOL? I'm sorry, S L O V. S V O L. S V O L, thank you. Was it this? It was a silver, high yield silver fund. God, like, why is it Vegas so fucking hot? <laughs> Shorts are infinite risk. Shorts are infinite risk. I mean, there's things that we have to limit that risk. We have stop losses. If you, unless you do a naked short, if you do a naked short, you know, bless. That's, that's, that's pretty scary as it is. Please pull up A L A A P L and overlay A P L Y. I'm curious. No problem, sir. <coughs> if in high, uh, if you can go back a few days ago, would you would you exit your position? Would I exit my position? I'm going to, I mean, I didn't put a ton of my portfolio into this. I'd probably just hold it for now. Okay. But if you knew it was going to drop, say hi, you had the same analysis as me. Would you have exited your position at like 18 and then re-enter at 13 completely? Yes. Yes. I'm not saying I called it. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was like just the timing, like because Tesla started dropping. But I mean, it's it did line up in your favor. I, I will say that. Same thing for Nvidia. Hey, shit! Yeah. I'm gonna buy the mess out of this. I'll say, okay, if you called that one, I called Nvidia. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I wouldn't have even looked at these stocks. It's so crazy. I, I have such a, a view of stocks. When you said, "Hey, look at these," I was like, "Okay, I'll see how I trade them." And you made a great trade on Nvidia because yeah. I mentioned it, right? Yeah, I was like, I mean, because all my if my typically how I trade is how my robots trade. So mm -hmm. he said. A P A P L Y and okay, was do that on the daily. Uh, what is it? It's actually almost gym time for me. Yeah, you want to show your spreadsheet and stuff. I didn't. I wasn't gonna go for an hour. I wasn't even gonna live stream today. Actually, you gonna hit that gym? I already did, but um, I've got to work in the morning. So it uh -huh. actually, it already is morning here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No sleep. Yeah. I would say it does. It does suck doing the same thing, man. And when I was in the Air Force, I was working like 12 to 14 hour days and mm -hmm. working weekends and stuff. I would still trade. I would do everything I possibly can to be in front of the charts. Really? Yeah, because it's the only way to escape. I don't miss those days of like, you know, 12 to 14 hours. I've done those before. Yeah. God, I hate to, I hate long shifts. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's let's change the amplitude a little bit. Not too bad. Let's see, change the amplitude a little bit. So I overlay them. I don't know how big their gaps are because the price on Apple don't show. All right, it doesn't show really well. But did yield max a Apple change a lot? Apple was the most stable one. Wow. I don't, I really got to look at this yield max because all my video, on my video creation list, I created two videos today. I'm sorry, three. The first video I made a chat GBT trading robot. So I, I used chat GBT to start trading to see how it would do. It burned like seven accounts. <laughs> 
So all those videos that people were talking like, hey, use chat GPT to trade, I d wouldn't recommend it. And then I made a programming one, but this one right here, I'm making my yield max uh, trading view, how I would trade yield max. Um, how do you, is it A-P-L-Y? Yeah. Oh man, I've got, I've got drama in my Discord. Oh, is it because of me? No, no, not because of you. I'm, I'm, I'm like three days behind. Oh, um, okay. We had a guy named Hoffman that he's been a regular participant on the channel, and um, I don't know if he he left the Discord, but he had a he had a um, back and forth with someone else. And oh, about what? Oh my! Oh, just stupid stuff. It's like uh, so. Let's do the same rule: moving mm -hmm. average of fifteen, exit on three candles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not making it up. I'm not changing the rules. Make it very simple, right? And moving average of 15 is just an example. You guys can make it 20. You can make it 22. And I'm also going for the dividend because that's what mm -hmm. my goal is now. I'm a dividend junkie. <laughs> Let's see. Where the heck is the arrow? So you would buy... I don't know, anywhere around here, exit here. Long as you bought, oh my God. This is dangerous. Oh, would you buy here? Let me see here. That's super scary. Buy where at the bottom? Yeah, like the price that is currently at. There is, I don't see any reason to buy here. Why would you buy here? There's like, there's, there's no indication of a reversal. Yeah. Damn, I mean, I right? would, if I was choosing a point on this chart, yeah, I'd buy the low, the low point. How do you know this is a low? There's no, there's, I'm saying there's no reversal candle. There's no candle telling you to buy. No, is no. what you're saying? There's not, like I say, you know, technicals are not quite my forte. Oh, oh, um, okay, let's just do this. Let's, uh, let's just do a case in point. Like, I, I'm a lawyer trying well, to bring Here's it. the thing. So I look at Apple stock. Apple stock is a good long-term, you know, buy for me. So I think this one, my rationale on all of these is that these stocks, I don't think they're going anywhere. So, you know. I think that you're, you're correct. I don't think Apple's going out of business. But you and me are talking about the Apple bull run after it's over. You, you sh we have you, we have should have we have should have made money off of Apple by now. If you haven't made money off of Apple off of the major run, then that's the problem. You're, oh, Apple, Apple oh, generated the down payment for my house. Did I tell you that story? Like I, I sold it too soon, but I had remember the seven for one split. Yeah, I was in on that. I but I sold it way too soon. I've I've sold in and out of Apple like three times. Like. Look at this right here. Like, I I, I just well, remember I'm not I don't like to make up rules, but even doing this simple analysis right here, you had plenty of time to exit. Like all this stuff up here is such dangerous waters. Like, do you mm -hmm. think that Apple is exposed to too much risk buying in the zone? It would be well, Apple is a good long term. You know, like, and it, it'll probably split again before long. Yeah, but is it a good idea to buy at this price? I mean, look at the entirety of the chart. Mm -hmm. Why would I buy here long term? Like, if you have to give me some compelling reason, like you have, a, you, we're not doing technical analysis. What it's at, reason? Like it's fifty-two week high. Yeah, like there's there's no reason to buy here. The money's already been made from here. I think someone wants to see the spreadsheet. <laughs> Talk about that spreadsheet. Okay. Analyze spreadsheet. Let's just bring it up real quick. Yeah, yeah. So I actually pulled it up. Oh, you got it? Well, Apple will split again. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Some of them had questions on like methodologies and stuff like that. But yeah, just go into that. I know you said you have to get to the gym and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I got to get my arm back. Yeah. I finally can work out normal after my uh, injury. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. I you gotta, said get your, you guys, arm, get your arm you guys, back. Uh, if you guys rock climb, I rock climb every Friday, and I got to a rock climbing incident, and uh, that didn't work out too good. 
I never yeah. pulled a muscle so bad before where I have to like I can't even lift up a heavy weight. Oh wow. Apple it does have good products. I mean I would never buy it except for them Dre Beats, but nothing else. <laughs> the the AirPods? Yeah, AirPods cool, but I would never yeah. buy their phone. They're, they're so I, this is something a little bit different. I do program in multiple languages. Their software doesn't support my way of trading and programming, so I don't buy their products. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that's a little background about me. I, I love the program at the same time. So if we just look at some of these yields from highest to lowest, where I did my screenshot to oops, I'll go back. So TSLY, this TSLA op income option, right? It's in the miscellaneous, miscellaneous sector, high to low, their sector. And the technical analysis rating by me is just basically moving average, right? Same rules. The market went up for a decade and is getting ready for a huge correction. There are, these are extraordinary times when dividend investors, most people are looking 20 plus years into the future. Well. Let me give you some perspective about that 20 year thing, Mr. Hound. Let me help you out, okay? Let me show you something that most people forget. The most important thing they forget. So instead of me show, making it up, let me show you something cool, okay? Most people don't do this when they invest. They do not, I don't understand why they don't do it. Maybe they're not aware, it's just how it is that even with my own group, when I talk to them about investing, they think 20 years, their charts are going to go up. They make a whole bunch of money, but the dollar gets crushed. My long-term thing is anti-dollar. That's why I buy precious metals. Mm -hmm. The dollar to me, 20 years from now, if it's still used, what would an apple cost 20 years from now if you measured it in dollars? What, the and iPhone? Still, or you mean the fruit? Yeah, an apple. Like just oh, one yeah. apple or, or a, a, milk, a carton of milk. Right. Like we, you're measuring... And you're not measuring the entirety of an, a portfolio. And that's why for me, like when I'm measuring my own portfolio and, and creating my own portfolio to be on the market, I, I, I think many people don't take this in perspective that 20 year investment with a dying dollar does not mean you're always going to be winning. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what do you think? Do you think you should be buying Apple at its current price 20 years from now? You'd be selling? Well, I mean, if you had bought like 20 years ago, Apple yeah, stock, 20, I mean. Yeah, 20 years ago, what, what was the Fed doing versus versus what they're uh, what they're currently doing now? Their quantitative easing doesn't even measure. They're not even on the same dynamic, you know? Mm -hmm. But hey, let me go back to the spreadsheet real quick. Some of these, based off of my simple analysis, actually says to buy. So this is a crude oil, a crude oil one. Says so it's at a yield of 42%. Okay. So let's look it up. It's a credit series. It's USIO. Okay. Look it up. Mm -hmm. US was it USIO or is it US OI? Oh, US OI, my bad. So this one right here is saying to buy. Typically. Does that seem like a good buy if it crosses over? Would I buy this? I don't know. But it just my my analysis here is supposed to be very simple. Like you're looking for a N N C N C I M. Give me a second. N C M I or M C I M. They're, I think they're asking a bunch of questions. No, 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 get out. Close the door, please. I, oh my God, this is such a, this is such a, a disgusting chart too. Ugh. Would you buy this too? This thing yields at 33%. Isn't it crazy that almost all these go in the same direction? Well, well, all out of comments are being, dude, it, it is like impossible to keep up and answer every I'm looking question. at the Discord. I'm I'm looking at stuff that happened like two days ago. I'm following this. Thank you, Hawk Farmer. Yeah. Oh, my bad. 
my largest position is the one I didn't uh, play much for. Just let it drip. Microsoft up more than 15x. Sometimes trading is fine, but it carries more risk. Same risk. Like I don't, I don't understand how people are measuring this risk differently. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're trading long, okay. So what what's a long term asset would you buy? Long term asset. Yeah, let's say long term. So retirement, okay. R- retirement real, asset. Real estate. Okay, real estate. If the real estate market is up five hundred percent, would it be in your conversation that you would have with yourself? That if I sell this property, right? Maybe this is not about like a, a like a rental. This is an example, right? Would you sell your property and wait till the market cools and then rebuy another property again, having excess funds? Because yeah, I mean, buy it's yeah. You want to buy low. Yeah, I don't understand why most people think that like long term investing and short term investing are typically different. They are different in how much tolerance they have for their rules, mm-hmm. right? So trading temporarily, let's say you're trading for like two or three days. So your rules of exiting are this, right? But when it comes to long-term trading, they have more of a room. My long-term trading and short-term trading both have rules like precious metals. I won't sell my metals until my purchasing power is 40x times larger. 40x, because that's what mm-hmm. I measure. So anything under 40x, I typically won't look at. But anything above 40x of purchasing power, that's when I exit. Mm -hmm. And I won't exit at one price. I will stair step my exit. All right, let's go back to here. Uh, Which which stock do you want me to cover? The yield maxes or? Look at NVIDIA. I don't think NVIDIA is on here. In the. Uh, Pick one that's, you know. Some oh, so all right, the spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah. So, what was the methodology? Some I showed it oh, last time I streamed. Uh, my my methodology is this. First, I needed my rule. My rule is anything above ten percent. We had, we discussed that prior. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anything above ten percent, I put on the chart. I added ETFs, ETNs, and rights or REITs, whatever you guys want to say it as, right? In there, I added the sector, I added the 52-week high, 52-week low, and what the current price is, right? Mm-hmm. So, for example, the 52-week high for this first company was $3.70. Its low is $0.14. Cents. Its current price is $0.16, cents, okay? Mm-hmm. It has a yield of 283%, some crazy number like that, right? Mm-hmm. Does that seem like a good buying point, even if the yield's high, but it's down significantly amount? That one, when I looked at it, I figured the yield was so high because it's been dropping a lot. The underlying has been yeah. dropping a lot. Same. I mean, yield max, to me, is in that category. Look, yield max is in the top mm-hmm. four. <laughs> mm-hmm. Six, I mean, is that 60.32%? That's insanely high. That, that, that mm-hmm. exceeds our 10%. I mean, they don't have an earnings per share, but if you look at some of these earnings per share, they're relatively bad. Look, that thing was at uh, seven. The thing's at like the first one. The first one is an example of a bad managed company, probably, which I, I don't know. I don't. I didn't look at all the details. But if it's if it dropped from three dollars and seventeen cents to sixteen point four cents, but has a negative earnings per share of thirteen of seventeen dollars and thirteen cents, what is that telling you? Has a negative earnings per share of seven dollars and thirteen cents. That's that's insane, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, w- let's see this right here. Let's. Uh, how about can you pick one? So I'm not cherry picking. So oh, do the one that this guy requested. SPCE okay. is a swing trade. Control F SPCE. I do not have that, but we'll bring it up here. All right, we got to end it pretty soon here. Dear God. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Virgin Galactic. Why would you? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Okay, let's we'll just we'll, let's have a general conversation. Okay, let's we'll, we'll look at the let's we'll look at the charts and let's see what it does. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. We look, it's, it's actually very similar to a cryptocurrency. No activity to massive activity to a down to, it's actually, if you said this was a crypto, I would believe you. Mm -hmm. Look at the four hour, okay? Four hour. King. Oh, wow. Give me a second, guys. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, four hour. Here we go. So, do you want me to, do you want me to do the same rules or same rules, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, I don't know what price you bought at. Mr. W C K. It's a possibility, but it might just shoot down lower. Michael Burry, after reading his article, and I'm going to check out his Twitter page, it really got me thinking that I'm possibly incorrect on some of my assets. Really? Yeah. So I locked in all my trades. My trades are all locked in positive. So even if the market does take a, you know, get slapped and goes down lower, I'll always yield a positive because I locked in all my trades. Oh, okay. So I'm not telling you guys what to do, but lock in your trades and you don't have to care about market conditions. Mm-hmm. All right, okay, we're gonna have to wrap it up here in a couple minutes. Uh, so, for example, we're currently at two dollars and eighty-five cents, right? Our mm -hmm. current high that we need to to follow is this right here. Why is this Why is this high important? Because it gapped. See this gap right here? Yeah. It gapped and filled the gap and shot down lower, here, telling you to exit at this point. Whatever you did here, you have to exit here. So for me, since I'm following the same rules, I'm being consistent, I would not buy right now because there's no entry to buy. Buying would have to conclude above this moving average to cross over one cross, two candles above, and then I'll be buying in the zone. So how would I do it? I can either do a buy stop or do a market entry and wait for it. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know what a buy stop is, when you're on like Robin, do you guys, what do they buy through? You guys, oh, Ameritrade, Schwab, E-Trade, okay. all of the above. I haven't bought SPCE. I'm waiting on a reversal. Con Thank you. Look at this. Hound is a beast. <laughs> he said confirmation. That's the hint. Like you have a confirmation to exit and confirmation. Some of the audience does day trade. Michael Burry is more than just the big short. That's just what made him famous. He's a value investor and I trust his opinion. So this guy him. writes for Seeking Alpha. He's very qualified. Mr. He, uh, uh, Mr. Engineer of Blake. Yeah. Do you think my analysis has been incorrect in what I've been talking about? I haven't changed my rule set at all. I've been very consistent the entire live stream, right? Even if I don't trade this way, if I did use the moving average, I still would do better than most of you, in my opinion. I would do better in yield max than most people who are buying the dividend yield max if I just bought with the moving out. Oh, that's going to get the fans. <laughs> I'm not trying to be your guys' enemy, but like for me, we have we have different perspectives in looking at charts. Mm -hmm. I mean, even he, look at this right here. Look at this sexy gap right here. Woo! It's good. Whoever Roll did that. Ride, huh? Like a roller coaster ride down. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, man, TA is good. I prefer there you to go. use volume profile and trade without stops, but you you clearly have a method which works. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind showing off my uh, my trading. It's not a really big deal. Uh, when it comes to trading, volume is a good indicator because volume indicates something real in stocks equities but volume to me outside of that market doesn't really exist i am better at range trading than momentum trading to me if i i like both long as how do you say long as there's no manipulation happening uh we're looking at s p uh c e and i'm not a professional in this trade but we can tell look at this right here see this big move down Mm -hmm. $5 down to $3. It took how many days to bring it up and push it down faster? Whoever yep. is trading this, man, they are picking people off. <laughs> man, 
They got they got these people by the balls, man. Yep. I'm better at day trading, volumes, everything. Remind me of the trades book again. Well, if you guys want a trading book, this is the one I bought. I don't I don't trade it anymore because I kind of grew past it, but it will help you guys out. It's an Elliott Wave. I am not an Elliott Wave trader, but it will help you understand more about patterns and stuff. You can join the Discord too. Oh, I can't do that because I'm going to get hate mail. <laughs> have, I was going to say you have a lot of fans there. Oh, uh, here. This book is called, you know, I'm not sponsored by this book or something like that. But it's Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is something I've studied for many times. I mean, I study finances so often that this is what, what it allows me to be doing what I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. The two fat dividends on TSLY in June and TSLY in July were were on the way up, so you could still trade it and collect it, the dips on the way up. Mark, uh, Mark to me, 29. A question directly to you. How much would... How much, if it keeps on going lower, how much would you continuously buy? Like, how much pain, do, I mean, even for you, uh, THB, how much, if it keeps continually going down, just say it's just, just this, every other, say every week, it it does goes lower, every week lower, every week lower, how often would you buy? I might buy one more time, but if it kept going lower, I would probably pull the plug on it and just wait it out. Reminiscent of a stock operator by Jesse Livermore. I mean, I, I hope these guys don't think I'm like a bear kind of guy. No. I mean, like I would tell everyone, so you're like you and me both, like we're not sponsored by anyone. We're not selling anything. We're not like some mm -hmm. of these other channels. Like we're, you know, coming at it from an honest standpoint. Yeah. I mean, so. I just come at it to see like, how would I? How would I make the best gain off these stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're thinking by shorting it. What? Anyway, we're gonna have yeah. to end it here pretty soon. All right. If you have any questions for me, guys, you can hit me up on my Telegram or just go to my YouTube channel, Andre J McClendon. Um, I love talking about finances, even in my own chart, in my own chat. I just all we do is talk about trading, investing. I, 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 what's your Discord at? Let me see. Mm. Here. Can I get your link? Yeah, yeah, I have it right here. Yeah, I'll join your Discord and see all about it because I'm really interested in seeing what you guys talk about, and I'll, I would like to be the, uh, the, the black sheep. Figuratively, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that guy. Um, so, Ant Boogie World and Hoffman got into mm -hmm. it, and Hoffman left the group, but he still PMs me, so. We'll mm. have to see. Yeah, there's some drama. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see, guys, because I'll tell you this. Like, I think the coming future when it comes to dividend investing will be more of my style than just keep buying the dip. Because mm -hmm. I think in the next couple of years, when we go into the real recession, we, we are in the recession right now, but the very beginning stages, once the recession starts getting bad, I think dividend investing is going to be very difficult. Mm hmm especially if we go into a stagflation. I hope we don't go into a stagflation because like me personally, I will make a shit ton of fucking money because of mm -hmm. precious metals. No offense, Andre, but he is poison. Who's poison? She's a big fan. If you can't I tell. think Andre is not a hit for his channel. What? Join <laughs> Jen. What? I'm, I'm, I'm poison. How am I poison? <laughs> Oh man, oh I don't know, I don't know, guys. <laughs> so it, is it because I have a different of opinion? I mean, my opinion is not incorrect right now. Technically, I'm correct. I don't. It can't get. So I read. I read a little bit of Hoffman and, and Boogie World going at it, and it, it can't. It can't get any worse than that, really. Yeah, I don't want to disagree with anybody in the sense of like causing an argument, but usually when people well, tell me that. Okay. One of my live streams to so join Jen and this guy named Daryl, they got into it. It was so funny. I popped some popcorn. It was so good. You do not answer questions. You day trade. You are an arrogant <laughs> jerk. How am I an arrogant jerk when I just 
I, didn't I just show data? That's all I did. <laughs> show data. I, I think that it. I think that join Jen. The the problem would be this. I'm out of this. <laughs> it's the problem would be this. If you don't like where the evidence or the money is going, don't get mad at me. Look at the people who manage yield max. Look at them. That's the problem. I'm not telling you anything that's not visibly shown on the screen. I'm not telling you an opinion of mine. The facts show that if you look at TSLY, the overall direction is down. That means the money is going down. Why would I buy in a downward chart? Hey, can I share your spreadsheet? Can I post the link for it? You can do whatever you want, bro. That, 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 okay. that link is completely open to anybody. Right. All right. They can't edit it, but. <laughs> right, right. And if you guys want okay, to edit I'll it, let it. me know. I can yeah. I can make it available. But yeah. Join Jen. Like, I don't understand what your point your point is. You're you're trying to give like a hot a, 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 a ad hominem or trying to put me as a down point, but there's no evidence that you can provide that's saying my men correct. You say don't answer the questions. There has been so many questions popped up that me answering some is better than answering none. Like, remember that uh remember that uh, uh live stream you had with the scammers? Yeah, that was great. Okay. Wasn't were their answers different than mine? When I asked them a direct question, how did they answer? They answered with a story and an emotion, right? For me, I answered with a chart showing direction, showing evidence of some sort, because I'm a very analytical trader slash long term investor. Andre cannot even say that yield max. What yield? Didn't I answer that? I even read it right here. What yield max does? I read it. This is highlighted before I even got to the screen. How am I incorrect on that? I don't despise anything. I just tell you where the money is going. I mean, hey, okay, TSB, if you had a short position in TSLY from the jump, would you be exiting that short position or keeping it? I mean, right now it could drop further. So, yeah. That short vision will be sitting fat right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, it just, it's not, it's not my place to give an opinion without evidence. Even when me, when me and you first met, every time we talked about something, didn't I show you evidence of it? Mm -hmm. So when someone says I'm being a jerk or saying all this stuff, I literally show you guys of what could possibly happen. I think there's three scenarios that can happen to yield max. It goes up, heads back down. It goes sideways, heads back down. It goes straight down. So yeah. I'm not trying to, uh, but Andre doesn't understand how yield max makes money for the fund. I did explain that. Didn't, didn't I explain that too? How they make how they're making money. I answered that question also. I don't understand what, uh, how many times you guys want it, which way do you want me to put it? We, you guys to me are seeing the market from a very, obtuse or bad point the bulls are almost over the long-term stretch of the market is almost gone we don't have much time of a i mean this is economic speaking but economically i don't think s p 500 the nasdaq the russell 2000 or s p 500 the dow all that stuff i think it's going to go up but once the election cycle is over i think the real crash is going to happen to the markets unless the Fed steps in. Mm -hmm. Dude, I like your chat though, dude. Like our chat, like uh, in my chat, when we were talking in the groups about finances and stuff, uh, I, I start giving them statistical data about what's happening. And like some of them take it in as it, but it seems like join Jed. Uh, I sold TSLY before Tesla earnings. I got back in much lower divvy and better prices. Cool. I'm happy for you. That's she did. Really that was a great move. That was yeah. a great move. Yeah. I like I said, I called that same. I don't know what position, what price you call, but for me, I was telling people to exit at this position. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no reason for you to, coach. You are losing credibility. Actually, to me, he would be gaining credibility because he has a he has a, a, a different viewpoint. If everyone, it's scarier when everyone agrees. Once yeah, everyone I mean, agrees. I have 
I, I have different people on. I mean, I have any, I have anyone on. I've even invited UWI on. He won't come on though. Ah, I wish I, the guy I invited got on. The, uh, uh, Waters, what's his name? Um, he's the 10K subscriber count. Mm-hmm. TSLY is not a good product to exit and enter because of the dividend record. If you would just screw up your profits, if you would just bought in late December and held until now, I am winning. What? Do you think that's possible? I I don't know how, how you staggered your buys. Yield max sells weekly calls, OTM. The time buy decays quickly. Interesting. Well, when it went, it's down like 25% from when it first went public. Yeah. I mean, we'll, 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 this is something good. Like if you have $1,000, right? If you were given $1,000 right now and you bought the majority at the top right here, would your dividend income bring you back to break even? Like, it's, it's really hard to see, like, where are the major buyings at? I don't know how people, I, I would have to look at their individual portfolio, but to me, I don't think the majority are winning. Join Jed bought at 16 and two and lower. So you're down three bucks. Anyway, oh, right, what I'm price gonna, is, I'm gonna have to sign oh, yeah, we, soon. Dude, it's late. Yeah, man, but yeah, that was I fun, guys. I didn't even expect to do a live stream, much less go this long. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're you're three hours up for me. But thank you guys. Mm -hmm. If you guys wanted to follow me, Andre J. McClendon, we can talk about finances. I love talking about finances. If you guys really want me to show you what I'm talking about more in detail, I will show you one on one. There's no charge. I'm not making any money off this. I will show you for free to show you what I'm talking about why and how I would trade TSLY and how it could benefit you. But I'm not telling you what to do. Please understand that. I cannot tell you what to do. Right. Uh, okay. Mark, well, good yeah, stream. But we got to go, bro. Yeah. How do you okay. Unshare. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone, Ooh, for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Peace. All right. I'm going to end it.